Hey everyone, this is the Banana Tuna here, and today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to Melty Blood Type Luna. So, some of you may be wondering why I'm doing a beginner's guide for this game when it's been out for quite a few months already. And the reason to that is that I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they're really interested in getting into Melty Blood Type, Type Luna, but a bit hesitant to do so because they come from a game such as Strive that isn't as combo heavy or movement uh, focused compared to type lumina so with that being said i'm i want to focus this guide as a way to allow these players to see that it isn't too bad once you get into the game itself and once you actually learn all the combos and all the mechanics to multiple type lumina, it is an extremely fun game that i really recommend any of you to pick up if you um, have the ability to do so so let's get right into the guide and with that let's just appreciate how cool this intro to the game is So on your screen right now are two characters. On the left is Akia Tono from the um, game Tsukihime, and on the right is Saber from Fate. So just like most anime fighters, Melty Blood Type Lumina shares many of the same movement qualities from those types of games. So for example, you have your walks, crouches, your jumps, your dashes, and your double jumps, and your air dashes. Now what separates Melty Blood Type Lumina from most anime fighting games is that it has extended air options. So, for example, in most fighting games, when I do an air dash, I typically can't do anything after it besides coming down with an attack, right? But uh, in Multiple Type Lumina, I can actually jump after it because my double jump essentially doesn't get wasted even after I do an air dash. This goes the same with the back dash and even um, vice versa too. When I, do a, when I do a double jump, I can still air dash as well. So it's just really interesting in terms of movement options in this game. And now another thing about Multiple Type Lumina is that you can influence your... Um, your air directions after a single jump, right? So if I jump with Akiha, I can essentially move a direction to partially drift from one side to another. And this actually becomes um, pretty handy when after knockdown, you want to really try to mix up your opponent and be ambiguous on your, your landings. Now, um, again, like uh, most anime fighting games, most of Type Luna has a super jump, right? You hold down briefly and you can jump, right? So you get a really far, um, uh, horizontal jump that actually travels in an arc, right? So this is, this is unlike most anime fighting games, where typically your super jumps kind of go straight up. This game, it goes um, horizontal is the direction it goes. And you can actually do the super jump in the air, right? And like we talked before about um, uh, air options uh, being saved, is that you can still air dash after uh, a super jump, right? So I can do this and back dash back. I can do a super jump and double jump right after. So that's very unique in terms of Melty Blood's movement options. So now let's talk about the buttons used in Melty Blood Type Luna. So Melty Blood Type Luna is a four button fighter and the notation for these buttons is A, B, C, and D, which is pretty um, typical for most French bet fighting, ga fighting games that come from the older Melty Blood titles or from um, Under Night and Birth, right? So your A, B, and C attacks are your basically your attack buttons, right? And you, there's uh, your normal 5C, 5As, your crouching 5As, your jumping A attacks. Same thing for B, which is more like your medium attacks. And your C attacks is more like your um, heavier attacks. Now, in um, just like many other anime fighting games, you're able to, if you're coming kind of from Guilty Gear, Gatling these buttons together or um, press them in a chain. So I can do 5A, 5B, 5C. I can do 2A, 5B, uh, 2A, 2, 2B, 2C. Or I can do um, I can do 5A into 2A, 5A 2A, 5A 2A 5B um, 2B. Man, I'm going pretty fast in terms of notation. And there's just a really just a lot of um, Gatling options off of these two buttons, even though uh, it's only a three-button uh, fighting game in terms of attacks, right? So something that's also really interesting uh, for uh, multiple type Luna and for most fans for fighting games, that there's some, there, this game has something called reverse speed. So by reverse speed, I mean I can actually go backwards in the chain sequence. So I can do C, 5C, 5B into 5A. Or I can do B, B, C, A, crouching 2B, and just I have a lot of different options when um, I'm doing uh, attacking the opponent. And this also applies in the air. Right? Okay. 
So now let's talk about the fourth button in this game, which is um, your D or your shield attack, right? So the shield in this game is the universal parry mechanic, meaning that I can parry um, Saber's attacks and see how there's a the screen kind of freezes up a bit. And so there's two um, types of shields. So you have your, your standing shield and your low shield. Now the low shield, of course, only parries lows. And if Saber were to do a, a mid attack on me with a 5C, I essentially um, don't parry the move because, and what happens is that I actually take a bit of chip damage. You look at my top left uh, health gauge, right? Let, let me do it again. Yeah, I take a lot of substantial health damage, uh, chip damage, if that happens. But if I do just a regular stand C, it's fine, right? Now, same. This also applies to um, standing shields and crouching attacks, right? So, say I were to do her um, crouching two C. I get a, like a fatal counter, right? I can't do anything about it, so I have to parry these parry a low attacks with a low shield. Now there's also an air shield as well, and it doesn't really matter too much um, if it's an overhead or not. Because the shield basically blocks any attacks from the ground or in the air, even in the air. Now, um, in terms of what I can do after a parry, it's actually pretty vast. So, Multiple Tag Luna has three options you can do off of a sh uh, parry attack. So I'll set Saber to 5C me again. Now let's parry, let's, let's parry the first one. So if I click A or C, I can actually launch Saber into the air, almost like how a dust works in Guilty Gear Strive. Now if I click uh, B instead, I teleport behind Saber. And lastly, if I click B and C at the same time, I go right through Saber. So each of these options um, kind of start a RPS situation every time an attack gets shielded. Right? So the person who's attacking basically has to guess what option I'm supposed to do. So now something more interesting is that even after I parry Saber's attacks and do an option like A, she can actually um, shield right after. So I can set Saber to do 5C and then shield right after, right? So I'll parry. Now Saber shield, now she gets access to all the options that we just talked about. So it essentially goes back and forth and you have to basically guess what option your opponent is going to do. And from what I've from heard from a lot of players, this is probably one of the more gripes people have with the game because uh, it's essentially random and you can't really ch um, determine exactly what move your opponent is going to do. So that's probably one of the more controversial things um, about, about this game. So those are your four main attack buttons. Okay, so something that I wanted to mention is that for some, uh, for a lot of the characters in the game, they have charged versions of their normal buttons. So we have Akiya's regular um, 5B, right? So this is her regular 5B if I just click it. But if I hold down the button, I get a slightly different version of that 5B. And you see how there's like a green spark associated with it right there? And this 5B basically kind of uh, bounces Saber off the ground, right? And uh, Akiya also has some other charging ones, such as jump, I uh, see in the air. And of course, each of these charge moves vary from char character to So someone like um, Saber, on the other hand, she has a charge 5C. And it's a regular 5C. And she also has a charge um, jump C as well. So something that I also want to point out about the shield mechanic is that throws pretty much beat um, the sh uh, if a person's trying to shield. So I'm going to I'm gonna set Akiya the shield and I'm going to uh, um, set Saber into throw. So let me just let me do that. I'll walk them through. So now, uh, essentially, if I were to do that, I get a fatal counter if Saber were to throw me if I were I was shielding. So this also adds again to the RPS um, in um, in multiple type Luna because a person what they can do they can either shield but fake it and not do anything after and then just throw. <laughs> so it adds a lot of RPS after RPS after RPS into this game. So that's something uh, to point out as well. So one of the most important things about fighting games is of course blocking. So of course blocking works uh, in most of my uh, most of my type of just in any other fighting game. So for example if they were to do a 5A, 5C, I, have to, I can either block that standing or I can block that um, crouching. So I do that again by doing slow. I can block both ways. But of course, I can only block overheads um, when blocking standing, whereas if I were to block an overhead crouching, I'll get hit by it, of course. 
So if I were to Sensei were to do a jump in C, I can only block that standing. Where if I were to do that again, blind crouching, I get hit. So that's normal. Now you can also block in the air. So if I could set Sensei to do a jump B, and I, uh, I'll do the same, I can block that uh, attack. But the interesting thing about Muscle Type Luna is that any grounded normal will will be air unblockable for a person that's approaching in the air, right? So uh, say that uh, Saber can is going to hold back when jumping forward. And if I were to try attack her in the air, she blocks that. But if I were to hit her on the ground, that is a guaranteed unblockable no matter what Saber does. And the only way for Saber to avoid that is, is if we were, she were to shield in the air. So I'll set her to the jump shield. That's the only way Saber can block an attack coming from the ground. So let's, let me do it. Try it again. If I could hit that. <laughs> there we go. So basically, uh, the only way to block any ground attack from the air is to do a shield. So that just shows that there's a lot of risk going um, into the air compared to when attacking from the ground. So this basically brings up the concept of aerial footsies in multiple type Luna. Because you have to basically be careful on what you're doing in the air. We'll also be mindful on the options you have. Uh, on the ground. And of course, using the movement options and air dashes you have available just to be a bit more ambiguous to make sure that you're not dealing with those situations. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how counter hits work in this game. So, of course, like in um, any other um, fighting game, if you hit a person uh, right when they're about to do an attack, you counter hit them. So, I'm going to set Sabre to do a, her 5C again. If I hit Sabre to while she's doing that, so you hear that counter um, announcement in the background. Now, there's also there's two types of counters. So you have your regular counter if you just interrupt an attack, but there's also something called fatal counters. So uh, one way to do a fatal counter is that if you do an attack in the air and you get hit out of it, for example, um, say that if I were to meet, uh, say were to meet me in the air and I tried to do an attack, a fatal counter basically I I get launch I get sent right down to the ground on a hard knockdown. So basically, fatal counters are extremely potent if you were to land them in game. So say I can, you can even combo um, off of fatal counter. So that just shows just how dangerous um, fatal counters can be if you're not being careful about what attacks you do in the air. So uh, one strategy that a lot of people do when they're trying to approach in the air is to do mainly attacks like five A. To make sure uh, that it's a quick move, so make sure that your your, your frames aren't long enough, they're able to able to get countered extremely easy. Because the thing about 5A, because it recovers fast enough, you still have access to a lot of your options in the air. You still you can still air dash after, and back dash of course. But if you do a move like 5B uh, or or jump C in the air, you can't do anything. See how? So I'm trying to spam air dash or jump after. I essentially can't do anything and extremely committal if I choose to do these attacks in the air. So that just shows that <laughs> there's a lot of decision making that comes when you're choosing your air options and air attacks. And of course, uh, you can also whiff cancel your jump A attacks into a into a probably like a uh, uh, into a B move. So say I can do like a jump A into a B. So that just shows that you are limited essentially in the air for your air attacks. Just Things to be mindful when um, choosing the right move to jump in. Because even something like a jump C, <laughs> if a person meets you in the air, if you try to do a jump C, that's a fatal counter straight in the face. So yeah, just something to keep in mind about when in terms of being careful with your moves um, in this game. Okay, so now that we know how each of uh, Meltybutt's four main buttons work, let's talk about how to apply the reverse beat mechanic into this game. So even though it's pretty cool that I can go down the chain sequence of buttons, right? I can go from CBA into BCA. Now, how is that really useful in a real game? So I'm going to set Saber to attack me with 5B uh, after doing attack on block, right? So she's going to hit me after I try to do attack. So see how I can block after um, 5A? Now, if I do a move, more um, recovery length move, such as 5, 5C, See that punish on the right side of the screen? So that means I really couldn't do anything about it. And this actually applies to how block streams work in this game as well. So if I were to do a simple block stream, it's 2A, 2B, and the 2C, that punish icon pops up. But 
if you notice, I didn't use my 5A yet. So I can actually go up the, up the sequence of buttons from um, A, B, and C, and actually go back to A to reduce the recovery that uh, from my 5C. So let's try it. So I can do 2A, 2B, 2C, 5A to cancel. See how I can block there? So this is how block streams of milks, but typically go um, in order of keeping yourself safe on the attacking side. So it's just by using um, low recovery moves and really quick moves such as 5A or even 2C. That's how um, people can usually protect themselves uh, when initially the offensive in this game. And uh, remember is that you have to be saving the button. So say that if I try to cancel my 2C, my 2A, 2B, 2C with a 2A, I couldn't um, do that there because I had already used my 2A um, in the beginning of the sequence. So remember, you have to save a button um, when doing a block string to make sure you have that one really quick button to go back to. So in this case, I can go back to the 5A, or if I do, um, I do 5A, 5B, 5C, let me do that again. I have that 2A to go back to in order to keep myself safe. So that's an interesting thing on how to apply reverse B in a real game. So up next, we're going to talk about um, the different macros that multiple type uses. So if you come from Guilty Gear Strive, you, you can remember that there is indeed a dash macro and also an FB button if you were just to bind that to your uh, controller. Now for multiple type loop, uh, they do, um, macros do exist in this game, but are a bit different from how a macros work in Guilty Gear Strive. So in multiple type Lumina, clicking two buttons together is essentially the macro itself. So in this case, the dash macro is um, A plus B and pointing a direction, which is unlike um, Guilty Gear Strive, which is basically its own button. And if I were to do um, A and D, I essentially get a throw. So I can throw Saber um, in front of me, or I can also back throw Saber. And of course, um, like most anime fighting games, you could also air throw. I'll set Saber jump. I can throw her in front of me. Or I can throw her behind me. Or oh, do that again. There we go. And then another interesting thing about the throw is that you can um, actually do a throw in a combo. So what do I mean by that? So let's let's send Saber up into the air. I can do B C into air throw. Now, if if you come if, if you come from um, past multiple um, titles, the B C jump cancel B C into air throw is probably the most famous and most meme on combo in this game. So <laughs> if I do, I can send Saber into the air. I can do B C B C air throw. The most basic combo in this game that leads um, that ends with a throw. That's pretty exclusive to Melty Bloods, because typically you weren't able to combo with throws um, in in between combos, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so now that we know how each of the four main buttons in Melty Blood works and how to apply some of the reverse beam mechanics, now we're gonna talk about how the essentially how the auto combo works in Melty Blood Tight Lumina. So if you play games like Dragon Ball um, Fighters, you can you notice how if you were to click the same button uh, multiple times, you're going to essentially get an auto combo, and that's basically the same thing on how multiple type luminate works. So I'm going to spam. I'm literally just going to spam 5A. So you see how that rapid beat icon pops up? That shows that I did an auto combo. Now let me set Saber to stop um, guarding. So if I do this on hit instead, it launches Saber up, and as you can see, the every even though. I spammed 5A. I did a BC, ABC into an air throw afterwards. And this applies to every single button, ABC um, button in the game. So I can do this with B. And I can also do this with C. And as you can notice, depending on the button you choose, the comb is a bit shorter because if I were to do something like um, the B auto combo, I'm starting with a jump B in the air. Whereas for the A auto combo, I'm doing an A B C, and then for the C auto combo, I'm doing a C um, combo right there. So that's how the um, rapid uh, um, auto combo works in Melty Blood. Now, another thing about this game is that um, if you have a button like 5A, right, you can actually whiff cancel this button into an auto combo. So if I click A twice, I get an Akiha um, auto combo exclusive move. So each character has their own auto combo move that you typically see, right? So as for Saber, 
Um, she also has her own auto call move. She uh, clicks 5A twice. That's her auto call move that uh, occurs on whiff. Now, it's also good to note that you can cancel this 5A into something like um, to a 5-2A. To whiff cancel 5-2A. Uh, or whiff cancel 5B. And or a whiff cancel 5C or 2C. Now, this only applies to um, 5A and 2A, as you can see here. But it doesn't work exactly for um, the B moves or the C moves. So it's mainly the 5, um, the 5 and 2 is able to cancel. And specifically about um, 2A, it's able to chain into itself multiple times. So I can do it up to 3 times, but if I were to do 2A 4 times, I go right into the auto combo. And um, this also applies to 5A, so either I could just let the 5A auto combo rock, just like you see here. But if I can, I can actually hold back and do 5A to get multiple uh, inputs of 5A without doing the auto combo. But just like 2A, if I do 5A too many times, I go straight into the auto combo, right? Now, this um, act, um, act, uh, action actually comes into play in how combos work too. So, in a regular sequence, when you do an, a combo in multi button, if you were to use the same button um, twice, it will automatically go into the auto combo. So I'm going to do 2A, 5, um, 2A, 2B, 2C, and to 2C twice. See how I got the auto combo um, move right there? This also applies to um, if I do 5B twice. So I can do 5A, 5B twice. I go straight into the auto combo. This literally applies to basically every um, move in the game. So another thing to be careful on Melchior Tight Luna is that you don't want to accidentally go into the auto combo move if you're not meaning to. So it's just making sure that you're actually doing um, different buttons every time you do your combos to make sure that you're not automatically going into the auto combo starter and actually getting an input like a uh, move like that. So even though the auto combo kind of looks sick with the BC air throw, it can actually hinder a lot of the damage that you do in this game if you accidentally go into an auto combo if you were to, were to click a um, button twice. So that's a really interesting thing about um, the auto combo uh, for this game. Now, as you can see, when you actually do the auto combo, notice that there's a launcher into that move where you see kind of Akiha's um, portrait and the rapid beat indicator on the left side screen. Now, uh, in, you can actually do that launcher input just by doing 3C. So each character has their own 3C launcher. Kind of like how a 2H works in Dragon Ball. This immediately sends uh, um, the character right into the air. So I can even do this in an auto, auto combo. So I can do 2A, 2B, 2C into the 3C in order to launch Saber. Straight into the auto combo. Into the BC air throw. So that's an interesting thing how to use the 3C. And although a lot of people may say that this is probably the 6P um, of multiple type Lumina such as it is in Strive. It's... Technically not the case because um, the, the hurt box of 3C isn't around the feet similar to Guilty Gear Strive. So it's just mainly how to launch your opponent in a combo if you don't want to accidentally do the auto combo moves like we talked about before. So that's just a general overview of how the auto combo system works in this game. So we talked about how the auto combo works in Multiple Type Luna. So of course, if you are if you don't know really how to do um, combos in this game, just by spamming uh, one button or uh, any other buttons in the game, you're able to get dish out some damage. But of course, combos don't end there <laughs> uh, in, in this game. You can actually extend combos by using an idea called the jump cancel, right? So what is a jump cancel? Jump cancel is basically when I can um, cancel an attack by clicking jump. So see how I was able to uh, cancel five, uh, cast 5 into a jump? I can do that with 5B. I'll also do it with uh, 5C as well. Now this also applies to the air. so. We did that regular auto combo um, into ABC uh, uh, into air throw. So let me do that again. ABC air throw. I can actually extend this further by canceling the jump C into a jump. And of course, uh, all the all these moves apply to the rest of Hakia's uh, moves as well. She did jump cancel each of her normals. So let's do that same combo again. But I'm going to do a jump cancel after that jump C. So I was able to um, extend the combo right there by doing that jump cancel into the air throw. So this definitely applies to not only um, regular um, normal moves in this game, but also applies to um, some certain special moves as well. So someone like um, 
Akiha. She has a jump castle point um, on her 214 series. So if I do a course circle back um, B, that's the regular one, but I can cancel that by doing jump. Now, this applies to um, Akiha's main BNBs as well, right? So I'm going to do her uh, normal uh, BNB with <laughs> using that um, 214 um, B series, right? So if I were to not do a jump cancel there, that's essentially the end of my, my Kagama. I only got around like 2k damage, right? But if I apply the idea of the jump cancel, I can definitely go way further in my combos. So I got way more damage there. So even though it is, the combo will get uh, um, a bit more difficult by implementing those, those, those jump cancels and those other um, types of moves, it just allows you to go way further um, in your uh, combos in this game. Just basically express yourself on how you want to do your own combos. So that's the quick idea on how the jump cancel works and how you can apply this to the rest of the combos you learn in this game. So the next part I want to talk about is basically what teching is and how to do text so the first thing that comes to your mind when um when a person hears the word tech is that a lot of people would compare this to how smash teching works i guess in a way and essentially that's kind of pretty, kind of the same thing on how um, it works in multi uh, blood type luna and a lot of other anime fighting games so uh, in order to do a tech you have to hold a button either hold a button or press a button uh, when you're in the air on the ground so i'm gonna set saber to do a combo and the moment that I hit the ground, I, if I time my button um, the, uh, the moment I touch it, I basically get back up. But if I don't click anything, see how it lands flat on the ground? So basically, it's um, by timing your tech uh, once you hit the ground, it basically prevents the opponent from getting a free heavy knockdown situation and aiming, and aiming to try to do some okizeme uh, on your wake up. So it's really important to tech a lot um, in multiple type Lumina if you want to avoid being stuck on the ground um, so long. Now, you can actually influence your attack by holding back or forward. So if I were to do it again, let's see if I do this combo again, I hold back and A, I basically tech backwards. And I can also do the same thing um, when doing forwards, I can tech forwards. Now, I can also do um, a tech in the air. If, say that Saber is doing a combo and the combo is a bit too long and that it causes me to drop the, uh, cause Saber to drop the combo, so if Saber drops the combo, I can essentially tech out of it. So let's see if I can try to do that. So I'm going to set Saber to do a combo. I'm going to do the auto comp, right? So say that I forgot to do the air throw. See how Akia teched out of there? Let's do that again. So I can actually click a button once I'm in the air and actually tech um, if uh, Saber drops the and, and as you can see, forgets to do that throw. So uh, like like the ground tech, I can actually tech forwards or backwards, right? So I can go to the other side if uh, Saber uh, drops that combo. And if I were to hold the D button, I will essentially um, tech only on the ground. So basically, I will I won't tech if I click the D button in the air. So if I hold it, I basically wait until the ground and, um, to tech. So this is an important thing to know um, when doing um, when getting hit by comms and multiple type Luna. Because sometimes uh, if you do forget the tech <laughs> in a combo, your opponent may be able to still continue their combo when you would have had escaped that. So that's just something to think about, um, especially when you're on the defending side and having to, to deal with the combo. And of course, when you do um, tech um, in the air, you're able to come down with a button and maybe do your own counter attack, as, as I'm demonstrating here. So that's just something uh, that just, just to think about when uh, playing this game. So you may be wondering why I'm on the character select screen right now. So not only am I um, trying to showcase just bunch of the different characters in this game. I also want to showcase what happens during round start in Mufflet Type Luna. So let's queue up Norman, so we're gonna go back to Akia. And let's choose Saber again. And we can choose, we can choose basically just in our stage. Uh, something like the the night version of the same stage we were playing using before. And you can also choose your songs right here. Now if I were essentially queue up, Round Star is pretty interesting in Multiple Type Luminum, and it has been in uh, many of the other um, 
older multiple titles. Wait for this to roll out. Right here. See how I'm able to move during round start? So I have access to basically all of my movement options during that round start sequence, but I can't attack um, Saber during it. So it's just a way that essentially the round start there is a basically a way to um, to reposition yourself into probably a bit better fit, uh, better position before you fight your opponent. So of course it, you're the opponent on the attacking side can probably use their movement to restrict you in one side or the other. So let's see if I can activate that sequence again. Try to get a uh, okay, oh, saber. Alright, so I won the first round. And we're back in that uh, initial round start stage. So I can't attack, but I'm able to reposition myself and stay on the other side of the screen. So just a display on how the round start works in Let's Without Lumina. Okay, so let's talk about how special moves and super moves uh, work in Let's Without Lumina. So in like most fighting games, if I do a uh, motion input such as a 236A, I throw out a Brilliant Wheel. If I do it with um, 236B instead, the, the attack changes a bit and Akio throws her brilliant wheel higher up. And this applies to the rest of her moves. So you have the core circle back are 214A and B. The B version goes a bit farther. Her short is 623 uh, A and B. And in Melty Blood type Luna and a lot of other Melty Blood games, there's a 2 2 input or double crouch input. She kind of doesn't stop here. Now, if I were to actually do a motion input using the C button, I get an EX version of that move. And this applies to the rest of her supers as well. Now, for most characters, this is essentially the case every time you do a motion input with the C button. But for some characters, um, they can actually use the C button in a motion input, but it won't count as an EX move. It would just be a regular uh, special move in itself. Uh, and of course, that just depends on the character that you're using. Now, there's also your super in this game, which is called your arc drive. So in order to input this arc drive, it's to do a 236 BC. So I'll do a 2 to BC. Akia has kind of like a command grab. And it's a definitely a way more damaging um, super uh, move compared to your EX moves. Now, in um, as you can see on the bottom left of my screen, that uh, your archer actually costed three counts of magic circuit. So you see right here, it costed all three. Now, if I were to do something like her EX moves, it only costs one count of uh, magic circuit as well. An interesting thing about the magic circuit is that you can actually charge up your magic circuit by holding down and A and clicking A and B at the same time. See how I'm gaining uh, magic circuit over time? So, in cases where you're far away from the opponent and it doesn't seem that they'll be a threat to you, if you want to build up meter when it says you, says that you're you're almost about to have um, a an additional count of magic circuit, you can just quickly charge your your, your magic circuit to get that extra meter in order to do an EX move. Hey everyone, just thought I'd mention that there are actually multiple ways to building up Magic Circuit, not only by using the charge AB method I was telling you guys about in the guide. So there are ma mainly two ways. One is either by attacking the opponent or either getting hit or defending. So technically three. So as you can see, as I'm doing damage to Saber, I'm gradually uh, building up uh, Magic Circuit over time. And if Saber were to, uh, to hit me, it also builds up uh, meter as well, and like like I said before, it's also nice. So just thought I just mentioned that before <laughs> I, I forgot to explain anything else. All right, thanks. Get back to the guy. So uh, we talked about arc drives. Now there's actually an, an additional super um, in multiple type Lumina called your last arc, and there's um, essentially two ways to do your last arc. Now the first way is that you have to have uh, four bars of meter, and this also applies to the, to the other way to input the last arc. Now, but as you can see, both Saber and Akia are capped out at four um, bars of magic circuit. So, how am I supposed to do this? So, in multiple type Lumina, if you actually lose a game, you're you're granted an extra bar of magic circuit. So, if I were to put Akia into the awakened state, which is what the game calls it, she have an extra bar of meter. Now she has four bars of meter. And this also applies to the opponent as well. So if both character, uh, both players lose a round, so they both lose the first round. So say that player one wins the uh, loses the first round, but player B wins. Uh, player A, uh, player one will be granted uh, four bars a meter for the next round. But if player two were to um, lose that game, so both uh, both players lost the game, 
uh, they'll both have four um, bars of magic circuit. So in order to do this last arc super, we have to click A, B, C, and D at the same time. Let's do that. This is her, so this is Akia's ultimate um, super um, in this game. And it's definitely one of uh, one of the most damaging supers uh, for uh, each character as well. So that's one way to do um, your last arc input. But there's the second way. Um, it's actually a bit interesting. So this actually goes um, uh, transition onto how the mechanic called heat works. So if I were to go back into the neutral state with Akiha and only have three bars a meter, if I were to click A, B, and C at the same time, I go into something called heat. So as you can see, my meter um, drains over time the longer I stay uh, in this in the state. And under um, uh, heat state, I get access to all of my EX moves. So I can do I can do several EX moves, and even I have little uh, heat meter. I can go straight into um, the arc drive, no matter how how low that heat um, bar lasts. Now, the interesting thing about heat is that I can activate heat if I have at least one bar of magic circuit. So, say let's let's use a few specials or ex moves. So I only have one bar of magic circuit, and I click ABC again. I go into heat mode, but as you can see, it lasts way shorter um, compared to the first time I did. But even in uh, that limited amount of time, I have access to my arc drive, right? Even though it costed three bars of uh, magic circuit previously, because I'm in heat state, it doesn't essentially matter because I still have access to that move, even with one bar of meters. So let's do that again. Activate heat C state into 2 to 6 PC. I can still do that arc drive if I'm in the heat state. Now, another interesting thing about um, heat is that it essentially acts almost like a burst in multiple type Lumina. Uh, similar to how um, burst works in uh, Gears of Gears Drive, right? So if I were to do um, Heat Round for a Saber, it blows her back pretty much, right? Now, the thing about um, Heat is that you can't do Heat when you're being combo. So the only ways to do Heat is basically in neutral or um, on off the ground. So if Saber were to two, uh, do a 2C and I just August on the ground, so I'll start to do that. I can basically Heat on Wake Up pretty much. And this basically blows Sabers away if she tries to uh, um, follow up against me. So let me let me set it again. So I'll do 2C, and I'll try to go for an attack. If I activate Heat on startup, uh, wake up, it, it basically pushes um, uh, Saber away. So I can actually activate Heat as uh, when I'm blocking as well. This 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 mechanic actually acts more like a guard cancel um, in this game. So I'm gonna. Um, set Saber to do a regular, just a normal strain. So 5A, 5B, 5B, 5C. So, as I'm blocking, I can activate Heat during that. So, if I were to compare this to Stride, this kind of acts more like how um, Yellow Roman Cancels work in that game. But, of course, once you're in Heat, you can't Heat again, of course. So, you, so you're already in the state. So, if I'm blocking, I essentially have to hold that, pretty much. Because I already used that Heat and spent the meter to go in that state. Now, the last thing about um, the heat mechanic is that it actually heals you as well. So I'm gonna set Saber to um, call me again. Do it again. So if you look at my health gauge on the top um, left, see how there's a dark blue bar next to uh, my, uh, uh, to the light blue health gauge. So that actually shows um, your secondary health. So there's essentially two health bars in this game. So if you were to go into heat mode, you heal that um, that health back because uh, of the damage you took um, during that. So basically, the amount of uh, uh, health you can heal depends on typically on how much the combo does, and the amount of uh, health you heal basically varies for each move a care uh, the opponent uh, does, and just the implications for each of it. So. The, the amount of health you heal won't be the same each time, but the fact that you do heal a portion of the damage you've taken um, uh, from a combo from the other person. So that's a lot of mechanics associated just to one, uh, just to the heat mechanic alone. That just shows just how powerful and important your heat resource is in uh, multiple type Lumina. So we talked about how uh, we had to use four bars a meter to activate um, uh, Akia's last art. So if I were to do that again, but go into heat mode, something different occurs. 
So I do that again. So I'm going to do Heat Mode with four bars of green. I can only do it with four uh, counts of magic circuit. I, I turn red and I go into something called Blood Heat. So just like regular Heat, I essentially have access to all my uh, EX moves, my arc drive, and it actually heals me faster than the regular Heat. But if I were to go to Blood Heat and I were to parry or the shield um, Saber's attack, I automatically go into the last arc super no matter where on the screen I am. So even if I were to um, basically parry a projectile or shoot a projectile full screen in Blood Heat and shield it, it will still activate the last arc and hit the opponent no matter where they are. So that just shows <laughs> how strong this um, option uh, can be uh, when you're in that state. And as you can see from um, compare it with the first last arc, uh, shooting a last heart in blood heat, um, shooting like, shooting an attack and doing a last heart in blood heat does way more damage compared to mainly inputting um, the last heart with A, B, C, and D. So with that being said, that just pretty much is an overview on how general supers and special moves work in this game. So the last thing I want to talk about um, for this beginner's guide is basically what the drive uh, moon drive gauge is and basically how to do a moon drive. So the moon, uh, the moon gauge on my uh, top left is indicated by that round circle moon icon you can see right there. So this moon gauge is pretty special. So the thing about the moon gauge is that we talked about the shield mechanic before. So every time you whiff a shield or um, you hold shield for too long, it spends some of your moon gauge. You can see that. So you got to be a bit careful on how you use your shield sometimes. Because uh, if you were to use if you were to use up all your moon gauge, you're only able to do a tap shield, and you can't really gain, uh, can't you do that hold shield and try to bait and wait for a burnt person uh, to attack you. Now another thing associated uh, with the um, moon gauge is something called moon specials. Now what is moon special? So uh, similar to how um, a special as say like a person like who plays Smash, right? So you basically hold a direction and click BC. So if I were to hold forward and click BC at the same time, I throw out Akiha's um, Brilliant Wheel. And this basically applies to basically every other <laughs> of, of her uh, specials. So these moon specials, they're essentially um, better, uh, sometimes better, sometimes better than uh, the traditional motion input special that you um, input regularly. And somewhere in between that of a regular special move and that of an EX move. So, of course, these depend on for each character. So, some characters' uh, moon special may be just absolute trash compared to just doing their regular um, special moves. But uh, that's just the association with the moon special, right? And as you can see, every time I do a moon special, it uses up some of my um, moon gauge, as you can see here. And typically, you have a full moon um, gauge. You typically get about max four, uh, four moon specials. And the way how to uh, build up your moon gauge again is from two ways. One is by either um, getting hit or attacking someone. So see how I'm gaining one count of moon gauge for every attack I land. Of course, you only gain one moon gauge once, one, uh, one count of moon gauge once during the first hit of a combo. So if your combo has like 20 hits, you only gain one moon gauge. So you can't like build up moon gauge infinitely, right? Uh, and the uh, other way of um, building up moon gauge is I said before is to get hit. So I can just save her to attack me. See how I gain one count of moon gauge every time I get hit. And then lastly, similar to how we charge up our, our uh, magic circuit, uh, if I were to use my moon specials and hold down and charge up, it builds up my moon, um, my moon gauge as well. So basically, if I do the charge up uh, when I'm low in uh, magic circuit and moon gauge, I can build up both <laughs> by doing this input. So that's a really interesting thing about um, about the uh, the charge uh, input as well. Now, one uh, thing to note about the charging mechanic is that let me set the auto recovery to off, in this, uh, right? So if I were to charge up and say that I'm trying to charge up my um, my moon gauge and my magic circuit, when I do that, it uses a bit of my own health in the top left. See how it's going, uh, 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 reducing over time? Well, until I reach max, it won't uh, reduce. So that just shows that there's a lot of decision making <laughs> when in terms of charging uh, up your magic circuit and moon gauge. But the thing about this is that 
uh, like we talked about before about the heat mechanic, if you go into heat mode, you basically regain all of that um, health back. And because it's not, you're not getting hit, you're, you can recover all of the health you've lost from charging up your meter and your moon gauge. So that's the interesting thing. Now, there's another thing about the moon gauge that you could do. So as you can see <laughs> uh, throughout the video where I accidentally did it, is that if you click BC at the same time, you enter something called moon drive. So this is a really um, cool mechanic that they um, added into a bunch of Luna. And there's a lot of ways to do a moon drive. So you can do moon drive normally just by neutral like I just did. Or you could even do it when doing an attack. See how I <laughs> I basically canceled into uh, moon drive after hitting Saber. And I can also do uh, this with um, some special moves as well. So when hitting the opponent, if I can land hitting the opponent. Even in um, EX uh, specials, I can activate moon drive. So I can do... Uh, I guess two. I can moon drive during move itself. So um, the moon drive activation is similar to how a roaming cancel works in Guilty Gear Strive, but of course there's no like shockwave or slowdown. So maybe similar to how like a regular normal red roaming cancel works in older Guilty Gear games. So yeah, so no slowdown, just a cancel, straight up cancel. Now. What happens when I'm in Moon Drive? So the thing about Moon Drive is that we talked about how Melty Blood uh, Tap Lumen has a lot of movement uh, options. So when you go into Moon Drive, it goes nuts, <laughs> like actually nuts. So we talked before how you could do an air dash, uh, an air dash and retain your double jump. You got two air dashes now, like just, the game just says, screw it, <laughs> you have more options. You can, you can even double uh, do a jump after. So you, get, you can even get three jumps and then do an air, um, an air dash after. So you get super jump, 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 air dash. <laughs> so just a, a crap ton of options for uh, for you to do in terms of movement when you go into Moon Drive. So you can just go absolute ham and just mix up your opponent if you want to, if you have um, uh, the resources necessary to go into Moon Drive. Now, another thing about Moon Drive is that um, your move specials actually get enhanced in some way. So uh, we talked about before how moon, uh, moon specials you could just do by holding a uh, direction during DC. Now, if you do it during Moon Drive, your moon specials gain something called clash frames. So before I talk about clash frames, let's talk about what a clash is. So a clash is basically when two attacks hit at the exact same time, causing the, of course, a clash to happen between the two characters. So it's going to be a bit hard to time, but I'm going to set Saber to do a charge C. And we're going to keep doing this until I land the clash. <laughs> so it may take a bit. So see how there was a clash right there when both of our attacks connected? So um, basically... Uh, what happens um, that is that both characters don't take damage, but the attack just basically cancels each other out, right? Now, uh, with that in mind, if I were to go into Moon Drive and I do a Moon Special, all of my Moon Specials under Moon Drive have a crap ton of um, of Moon uh, of Clash Frames to go through. So basically, I can literally just go through attacks at this point, right? See how I went legit right through Saber's uh, Charge 5C? So that just shows just how strong Moon Specials are when you're in that Moon Drive state. Now, another thing about Moon Drive that really should be considered is that Moon Drive is essentially pretty much invulnerable on Wake Up, right? So if Saber were to like do a 2C on me and I'm on the ground and, I tr and sh she tries to do like two A's, right? If uh, I were to do that accurate Moon Drive, I'm invul. And I can throw Saber out of it. So <laughs> it's so on long side with Heat, you have the option to do Moon Drive upon Wake Up and to counter your opponent. But the thing about uh, Moon Drive activation on Wake Up is that you are not vulnerable um, in, in vulnerable to throw. So if I were to do that again with Saber, I can basically throw um, uh, Akiha out of her Moon Drive. So let's see if I can land this, right? Moon Drive one time. See how uh, you heard the counter there? So because uh, um, Moon Drive isn't uh, vulnerable uh, to throws, that's why that happened. But if I were to do that again, <laughs> I can. Uh, so I, can, I had the option as Akiha to either activate Moon Drive and um, backdash or jump. Or basically, if I try to do an attack, it can still get thrown by Saber, right? So let, let's see if we can do this again. So I can set her... Try to throw me on wake up. I can activate moon drive and I can backdash to get out of that, right? But of course, Sarah may predict that, may do the attack to catch me. And another thing is that 
Um, the thing about Moon Special is that because they have so many Clash Frames, if you were to do them on Wake Up along with the Moon Drive activation, they pretty much almost become like invincible reversals, such as like a DP or Shuriken in Yuzu Strive or other fighting games. Let, let's, let's demonstrate that. I basically got through Sabers to a meaty because I activated Moon Drive and used my um, Moon Special as a wake up option. So if Sarah would do like a charge C, I could basically just go through that as well. So this just shows just how powerful <laughs> these options are um, when you're under Moon Drive. There's something really cool about the game when you, because you have both a magic circuit to worry about and a Moon Drive and Moon Gauge um, option uh, alongside it to basically combine them together and just go about on your play style, right? So with that being said, I think that's pretty much it for uh, what um, beginners need to know about um, multiple type Lumina. So thank you guys all for watching uh, this guide. This took a long time <laughs> to make, and I'm sorry it took it took so long to come out. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys. Let's